All right, who loves a summer barbecue as much as I do? Listen, if you want to impress everyone with some super yummy dishes, you need ButcherBox in your life. ButcherBox is my go-to subscription box that delivers high-quality meat and seafood to your door with free shipping always. And I'm talking high-quality cuts at an amazing value. 100% grass-fed beef, free-range organic chicken, pork-raised crate-free, and wild-caught seafood. We are saving so much money every month with ButcherBox over going to the grocery store and buying meat and seafood and saving a lot of time. But get this, last month we saved nearly $200. I also love that ButcherBox curates these tips and recipes that are based on your box so you know what to cook. I made the most amazing steak with a basil sauce the other night. And oh, let me tell you, my friends all raved at how amazing it tasted. I'm definitely going to be pulling that recipe out. If you want great meat and seafood in your life, you need ButcherBox. Sign up for ButcherBox today by going to butcherbox.com slash ETM and use code ETM at checkout and enjoy your choice of bone-in chicken thighs, top sirloins, or salmon in every box for an entire year, plus get $20 off. Again, that's butcherbox.com slash ETM and use code ETM. This Father's Day, the Home Depot has same-day delivery on the perfect gift to help dad be everything he can be. Because your dad is more than just a dad. He's groundskeeper of the yard, the perfecter of the patio, and the cleaner of the clippings. Let the Home Depot help power dad's doing with the convenience and gas-like power of Milwaukee cordless outdoor tools. Plus, get up to $150 off select Milwaukee tools. For everything dad is, find the perfect gift at the Home Depot. How doers get more done. Order select and stock items by 4 p.m. subject to availability. Thing that I would tell myself is like really have some intensity and energy behind it. It can be really easy when you're in debt to like feel like you're waiting a lot of the time. So there, I, I got into the season where like if I knew payday was on Friday and it was Tuesday and I didn't have money in the account, I was just sort of like not living between Tuesday and Friday. I was just sort of waiting for the paycheck to hit so I could do something with that money and get further ahead. And what I would tell myself now is like, listen, That's four days you can be innovative and creative. That's four days you can like make some phone calls to reduce expenses. That's four days that you can um, increase some revenue somehow or other. You can create, you can do all kinds of things, but like put some intensity and energy behind it because the longer you wait, the longer it takes. Our guest Erin Sky Kelly wrote her new book, Get the Hell Out of Debt. I love that title. Rooted in her story of getting out over $2.1 million in debt. Her book, and frankly, this episode, is a judgment free zone jam packed with tips to really revolutionize your relationship with money and strategically come up with a plan to get rid of your debt. You'll learn how getting out of debt will open up opportunities to build wealth beyond what you can imagine. More about Erin's personal debt-free journey and small steps you can start taking right now. I'm thrilled to have you here for this episode. I'm Shauna Compton-Game. This is Millennial Money. Let's head into the conversation. Erin, I am so thrilled to have you on the show today. Thank you so much for being here. Shauna, I love your podcast, so I am honored to be here. I want to start here. So on your website, you say that you teach people how to transform their lives through their relationships to money and each other while having fun in the process. So talk to us about, I guess, the significance of our relationship with money, because most of us don't have fun with money. So like, what are we missing? (laughs) Well, I think that's why people end up with financial stress, especially in relationships or marriages that are long term. Um, you know, we often hear the quote that like the number one thing that people fight about is money. And I think it's because we, we don't have a good relationship with money as individuals. And so I think it's just really, really critical that money be like an expression of who you are versus like this math equation that you constantly feel like you have to, you know, solve and that you're constantly failing at. Cause I just, you know, there's so many amazing things that money can do in terms of your quality of life. And so if you can sort of master those things by mastering your own relationship with money, you can have better relationships with the people that actually matter. And I guess even stepping a little bit back from that, this concept of having a relationship with our money, I think for a lot of people still feels a little strange. Like, 
how do we uncover what our relationship even is? That's such a good question. Okay, so how basically what money does is it's like a it's an external representation of like what is actually happening within you. So if somebody has, you know, what we would call a worthiness issue or somebody, you know, doesn't feel like they're deserving, oftentimes they also have um, an unhealthy relationship with money. So that might show up as they, they carry a lot of debt, they give a lot of money away, or they're helping other people all the time. Like they might have bad money boundaries. And so they're constantly giving money away to help other people, but not taking care of their own well being first, you know, not planning for their own retirement or that kind of a thing. And so that, like, when we understand that, like, money is, it's just sort of like a, a form of energy. Gosh, I sound so woo woo and I'm not woo woo at all. <laughs> um, but it, it's, it's, it's just like basically a representation of how you show up that really then can change the way you view money and how you treat it. Just like if you're in a relation, I don't know if you've ever been in a relationship with a terrible person, but I made some uh, yes, I have. <laughs> terrible dating decisions when I was younger. Right. And when I was in those relationships, Basically, what was happening was when I was in a relationship with somebody who treated me poorly or or who I couldn't get along with, I was allowing that to happen. And I was trying to put their needs above mine. And I was walking on eggshells. And I did all kinds of like really terrible things. But it wasn't until I fixed the part in me that needed to be kind of tended to. Fixed is not the right word either. But you know what I mean? Like I, I needed to do that yeah. inner work first, that then my external relationships became better. And it's the same with money. Mm, yeah, I love it. Wow. I, even thinking about the idea of of debt, because I know that's something that is so heavy for so many people. And I tell people that the reality, I believe the reality is that from what I've seen, people move in and out of debt throughout their lifetime. It, most people don't just pay off debt. And for the rest of their life, there there isn't debt, but maybe they re, redefine their relationship with debt. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of through that process. And sometimes just crap comes up in life where maybe we have to go into debt. And that's just what happens. That's kind of the nature of of life. But I want to talk about your your new book, uh, Get the Hell Out of Debt, which by the way, I love the title. Thank you. <laughs> and I know it's rooted in in your own story of, of getting out of debt. You were in some big number, like $2.1 million that's of debt. Number. Yep. So, okay, tell us your story and why do you think the process of getting out of debt is just so wildly tough for so many of us? Well, I think it's wildly tough because it's so easy to get into, right? It's like it's like anything that we want to do to make our lives better. If we want to get healthy and we've been, you know, eating junk food for a large portion of our lives, switching from, you know, Big Macs to broccoli is a really tough transition for a lot of people. <laughs> and so it's that thing where it's like, you know, debt is so normal and it's so prevalent and it's such a, like it's sold to us in such an easy way that um, sort of mastering that part of you that thinks you need it is the part that really can set you up to, you know, sort of mm. change your financial freedom process. I guess the the thing that people need to know, like when it comes to my story is like, I thought I was doing everything right. Like I did everything, like how you're supposed to do it. I had great credit. I bought a bunch of rental properties. I was like really wealthy on paper, but I didn't have enough cash. And I didn't realize that the banks, like every time they would give me money, it wasn't because I was a good person or because I was smart with money. It was because they knew they could make an interest payment off of me and that I would put their needs ahead of mine and fight really hard to make all those payments to keep my credit score really high. Um, but to the detriment of my own financial well being. And so I really like I woke up one day when I was like, why am I broke? Like on paper, I have so much money. I should be like Kim Kardashian <laughs> and I am not. And I, you know, added everything up and I was like, wow, I'm $2.1 million in debt and I have no idea how I'm going to pay for it. It like I just kept, it just kept becoming accessible. And the, the solution I kept trying was trying to refinance or consolidate or borrow to get out of debt. And, and I quickly realized that that was like a losing game. So, you know, in that process, figuring that out and then really learning how to redefine my relationship with debt and understand like, wow, this is a business. This is not about convenience. This is not about helping me meet my needs. This is, you know, as a privileged person, debt is accessible and and it's there because I'm making lending, like lending institutions or lenders more profitable. They're not doing it as a favor to me. They're doing it because they're making money off of me. And when I realized that it was a business and I started to 
really understand how money works and what its purpose is in my life. That's really when I started to change my own relationship with it. But what was interesting is so many other people came out to me, people that I thought were successful financially, like realtors, lawyers, financial planners, accountants, like people who worked in financial services were coming up to me and whispering, like, I am so screwed. How are you doing this? Like, please teach me what you know. And so that really started the process of like, why are we as a culture in so much debt, especially consumer debt? And do we need to be? And and redefining that, you know, maybe, maybe we don't. Maybe there is another way when possible. Okay. There were a lot of gems in what you just said. <laughs> I, I want to pull one out and have you just go a little bit deeper into it. So you talked about this idea of of figuring out how money works. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. Like how how does money work and like what are we getting wrong? Well, I, you know, I don't know that we're getting anything wrong because I just think we're not being taught in the first place, right? Like most people that are, you know, in their 20s and 30s, when I have a conversation with them, they actually don't know what an asset is. Like when I'm like, what is an asset? They're like, I don't know, my car or my house. And those are not assets. And so we're not being, it's not that we're not getting it wrong. It's, it's that like what is an asset is being disguised. And what's happening is it's being disguised because it is something that a lending institution can lend against in order to earn a profit. So if we are all taught that our cars and our homes are assets, then we're more likely to go into debt for them because we feel like we're doing a good thing. And if instead we were taught from a very young age, listen, if you're like, here's how compounding works. Here's how, here's what an actual asset is. Here's how to acquire them. Then what happens is we're setting ourselves up to be in a position where if we do want to buy a liability, like a car or a house, it's not requiring us to trade in our lives. Like we're all trading so much time. Most of us give 40 to 50 years of our lives away in occupations that we don't like in order to keep up debt payments for things that we don't even really love. And it's making us miserable as a society. And so understanding that, wait a second, maybe getting out of school with a student loan and then immediately, you know, getting into a relationship that's long-term, anchoring ourselves to a 30-year mortgage, buying a bunch of vehicles is not the key to happiness that we're being sold. I like it because it's certainly something I talk about on this show a lot and something that I'm just like personally very fascinated by is that the kind of old school way that we're taught about money, Mm -hmm. in my opinion, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not what I've seen actually create what I would call quote unquote wealth and also what I would call some sort of balance or quality of life. And yet- we just kind of graduate college and we just kind of, or whether we graduate college or not is sort of irrelevant to the equation, but we just grow up and we start thinking, okay, yeah, yeah, like here's, here's the linear path that we take. And if we're not on that path, like we must not be doing it right. But that path doesn't make us happy. It doesn't make us wealthier. It doesn't, there's none of that. And so it's like a scratch your head moment of, wait a minute, why are we even doing this? Yes. Preach. I love that. It's so true. And I think that's the 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 kind of way we're failing our kids when you you know back to your question about like what are we getting wrong? I think that's connected to it because we're not asked I remember like nobody asked me like what is it that lights you up or like you know they were asking me like how much money do you think you need to make and then here's the list of careers that suit right. that. And here's the list of careers that might suit your personality versus being like how do you actually want to contribute to this earth? How do you want to show up for people? How do you want to express love? How do you want to see the world? How do you want to, you know, all those other little things that really make life joy filled. And it seems so simple. And so I think that's why like so many of us don't actually stop and like consider those things because it just seems like, well, it can't just be that simple, right? Right. Right. (laughs) But, but it actually, it actually is. Uh, Like, I'm curious when kind of your debt journey, debt payoff journey, and when you talk to other people, like how important is that um another thing we might overlook but like that visualization piece of like what it would feel like to get out of debt and like kind of keeping that in your frame of mind because it is a tough journey. Well, I think that's a you know when you when you I don't know like I guess when you look at all of the monthly payments that people have accumulated over their life, right? And if you were to like add up that number and go listen, if I didn't owe this mortgage or rent money, if I didn't owe this car payment, if I didn't owe these credit card payments or these loan payments or these, you know, if I didn't like, and if I added up that money every month, 
And now I were to compound that if I, you know, put it in my little, I'm such a nerd. I have a compound interest calculator on my phone. I'm so boring at parties. <laughs> but you know, I put in a compound interest calculator and I look at like what I could do with that money in five, 10, 15, 20 years. We can start to see how like, oh, these little decisions that we make add up to a huge difference in the long run. And and if what actually makes me happy, let's say, you know, I've got this friend named Lisa Alexander and she's amazing and she's funny and smart and beautiful at all of the things. She's an amazing human. And she's got a little tattoo of an airplane on her wrist. And I said one day, what is that about? And she's like, I have wanderlust. Like I, I love to travel. I want to travel the world. I want to see every corner of this planet. And that's what lights her up. But if Lisa took the get the hell out of debt program because she had a ton of debt. What what she's actually doing without realizing it is she's limiting her ability to do those things. She's limiting her ability to do the things that make her happy because she's anchored into this monthly payment. And then what happens is when we're miserable and we've, let, let's say, paid off one or two things and we think, gosh, I need to go on a vacation. Well, she doesn't have the cash to do that. So she's got to then put the new trip on the debt and she's in the same cycle over and over and over again. So if instead she could go, gosh, you know, I, maybe I have to work hard for five years or something, you know, like put my head down and right. and work a little harder, but it'll give me 40 years of freedom and I can travel the world while I do it. And I can figure out how to work abroad or whatever. Like that could be an option for her. Or maybe her option is I don't work really hard. I start incorporating travel into my life from an early age and I just start putting money away for like, there's all kinds of ways you can do it, but without really knowing where your money's going, what you're anchoring to, what it is that you really want and like what represents happiness for you. You end up building a life that like maybe your parents built or maybe other people see as successful and you're actually flipping miserable and it's so much harder to get out of. So really paying attention to like how those monthly payments affect you is like an understanding that, wow, like what if I made decisions so I didn't have these anymore and then any income I earned actually came to me to live my life and or build some assets so that I can, those assets can further pay for my life down the road. Like it just changes the whole conversation around money because now you're not like, how am I going to ask my boss that I don't like for a raise? You know, how am I going to afford parking at work? Like you're not making little decisions. You're making big decisions, but they're actually impactful and, and make you happier in the long run. So tell me, what are your money goals that you have for this year? Maybe you're like me and endlessly looking for a house to buy and you're focused on saving for a down payment or you're drooling over traveling somewhere tropical this year and you want to save to pay for it, or you're ready to leave your job and build your own business. So you're going to need some startup funds. Whatever your goals are this year, Monarch can help you reach them. In fact, the Wall Street Journal named Monarch the best app for growing your savings. Monarch is the top-rated all-in-one personal finance app. It gives you a comprehensive view of all your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, track progress towards financial goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com etm. What I love about Monarch is its simple and easy customizable design, so the dashboard can look exactly the way you want it to. I'm also a big fan of creating custom budgets for things like travel. It's one of my favorite money tips. And Monarch lets you do this so easily. This is such a great way to stay motivated when you've got a lot of money goals. You can easily track your progress with every dollar that you save or spend. Remember, your brain loves to see progress and you should celebrate it when you're saving money. And honestly, I am so focused on privacy, so I really admire that Monarch will never sell your data to third parties. This means a lot to me and it should mean a lot to you as well. After trying out Monarch for myself, I understand why it is the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, listeners of the show get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash etm for your extended 30-day free trial. Whenever I'm gearing up for the next trip, deciding what to pack is always so stressful. The clothes I have either don't fit or they're worn out or they don't match. But then I discovered Quince. This is my go-to for high-quality vacation essentials I will be packing for all of my trips to come. Things like premium European linen dresses, blouses and shorts from $30, washable silk tops, premium luggage, so much more. And get this, my friend. The best part, all Quince items are priced 50 to 80% less 
than similar brands. By partnering directly with top factories, Quince, they cut out the cost of the middleman and they just pass that savings on to you. And Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices and premium fabrics and finishes. I just bought their 100% European linen button-down front dress in the most beautiful brown color. And seriously, I get compliments everywhere I go. It looks like I paid a fortune for this, but it really only cost $49. And it's such a stunner of a summer dress, perfect for any vacation. Pack your bags with high quality essentials with Quince. Go to quince.com slash etm for free shipping on your order and 365 day returns. That's q-u-i-n-c-e dot com slash etm and get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash etm. I have super, super sensitive skin, so what I put on it really matters. That's why I am a huge fan of One Skin. I have been using their products for a few months now, and I cannot tell you how many comments I get about my face and how healthy it looks and how much younger I look. I'll take those compliments all day. If you have got sensitive skin too, you're going to be amazed by One Skin. I'm talking skin that isn't red, irritated, or itchy anymore. Founded by an all-woman team of scientists, One Skin's products are backed by extensive lab and clinical data to validate their efficacy and safety on all skin types. Their topical supplements are the easiest way to keep your skin healthy and hydrated without the harsh ingredients or irritation often found in other skincare products. For a limited time, you can try One Skin for 15% off using code ETM when you go to check out at oneskin.co. Give your skin the specifically proven gentle care it deserves with One Skin. You know, treating the symptoms rather than the root cause of aging, it has been the norm. Most skincare available on the market, it's designed to provide a temporary reduction in visible signs of aging, addressing just the surface symptoms of an underlying decline in skin health. One Skin believes the purpose of skincare is not just to improve how we look, although that's great but also to optimize our skin biology so that it is more resilient to the aging process. Yes. One Skin is the world's first skin longevity company. By focusing on the cellular aspects of aging, One Skin keeps your skin looking and acting younger for longer. Get started today with 15% off using code ETM at oneskin.co. That's 15% off oneskin.co with code ETM. After you purchase, they'll ask you where you heard about them. Please support the show and tell them that I sent you. And the one thing we can't get back in this life is time. So Absolutely. if we spent those 40, 50 years and we look back and we're like, oh my gosh, I've, I've never actually been happy. Where as we could, however old we are right now today, make those decisions to start. Um, like you said, even if it is four or five years away, at least that's we're being proactive today about about making those choices and putting ourselves back in control. Yeah. If you ask any 40-year-old, like if you're in your 20s, go find a 40-year-old and be like, hey, what do you wish you'd done differently financially when you were my age? And they will all tell you like, oh my gosh, don't get into debt. Like they'll all like beg you, right? And same thing if you ask a 50-year-old or a 60-year-old, they all wish that they'd started younger doing things that set them up for financial freedom early. So no matter how old you are, there is somebody older than you who wishes they were in your shoes because you have the luxury of more time than they have. Mm, yeah, I love it. So I want to roll up our sleeves a little bit. I, I don't want to spoil everything in the book, of course, because I want everyone to read it. But can you tell us like, what are some of kind of the, the, the core principles that we need to know if we're on the getting out of debt journey right now? Where do we start? Well, I think the first thing I've divided the book into three phases and it's sort of how we've been teaching people for years how to get out of debt. So phase one is like understanding financial fundamentals. So it's like how money works. Um, but more importantly, how you work with money. Cause there's a lot of debt books out there, financial books out there that are like, you know, spend less than you earn and like, duh, we all know the math behind it. Right. But we're all right. breathing human beings who make decisions based on our feelings and based on our behaviors. So understanding, rather than trying to fit your life into this budget that you've created, make your budget fit your life. And so that's all kind of in that phase one process. It's like more of a discovery phase, figuring out who you are and how you relate to money and how you want to relate to money and what vision you want to create for your life. 
Then phase two is really getting out of debt. If you've got consumer debt, it's like how to pay off debt. And then phase three is building wealth. And if you don't have any debt, you can skip right from phase one to phase three and start building wealth. But the tools that you use to pay off debt, if you do it properly, are the same tools you'll continue to use to build wealth. And that's the thing that prevents people from going back into debt. I know lots of people who paid off a credit card and then end up right back in debt later. And so what this is about is like, let's get out of that pattern and let's sort of create a life where sure you can have credit if you want it, but if we can do it with cash or we can do it, and I don't mean cash, like a bag of money, like Scrooge McDuck standing at the bakery <laughs> counter. I mean like, you know, like money that you actually have, not imaginary money. Um, if you can live your life that way while your money is making more money for you, then um, you really can do anything. You can give more you can enjoy more, you can help other people more, all kinds of things. So that's sort of like the how the book's laid out. But I think the most important thing is in that phase one process is really, you know, if you are just starting out on your financial journey, and I know nobody is because everybody has to binge your, po- you can't listen to one episode of your podcast. You like, you listen to a Shauna episode and you're binging for life. But so <laughs> all of your listeners are like already versed in money. But what I would, what I would tell them to tell someone else who's just new to the journey is like, figure out like what what your earliest money memories are and then what patterns those created in you in your relationship to money and decide now consciously if you want to break those patterns or if they're serving you and if they're serving you then keep doing what you're doing but if you have like a negative money memory or something happened or you know in your childhood or in your teen years that's like a, it sort of has imprinted you then do the work to break that pattern because that's the, th- that pattern is the thing that's going to hold you in the same pattern you've been in your whole life. So if you've been in debt for five years or more, odds of you be- continuing to be in debt, even if you pay off a card or two are very, very high, unless you break that pattern. A hundred percent. I mean, that's why I'm so passionate about talking about the emotional side of money, the mindset around money, because I know a hundred percent that the, the that is the reason that we, our money story, I mean, we could wrap that all up together, but that those are the reasons why we get in the spin where we're trying to achieve something and we just can't get there. And like, we just can't understand it. And when I was yeah. a working uh, certified financial planner, when I work with clients, it's like, well, you're just in the, you are just kind of on the hamster wheel. It's not about the numbers. We can yes. keep pushing more money in the system here into your bank account. It's not about the numbers. We've got to really like, hit the pause button, we got to come back and play in all this other stuff in the muck. When we figure out the muck, then we can hit the play button again on the money. And that's really where the change is going to happen. So I think what you're saying is, is so critical. I really wish like people, everyone listening, I really wish you would just like take some time and think about it. Like think about what you're telling them, Aaron, because this, I believe these are the keys to, to really changing your life. And also future generations. Yes. I think people don't have those conversations with their kids. And then the kids end up just like figuring out like, how am I going to make it to payday versus what am I working towards? Right. What do I want? Especially if you're married. Like I talked to lots of married couples. I'm sure you did too when you were in your practice, but also now is like, what do you want life to look like when you're 90? And they're like, I don't know. I don't know. (laughs) Like I want to travel. I'm like, well, do you, who do you want to wipe your butt? Like, what do you want? Like, you know what I mean? Do you want to take a salsa class? Do you want to like, they, we just don't think about those things. And those little things become like part of the fabric of like, like, especially as you're like learning to enjoy, like, for example, I did this work on myself like years and years and years ago. And I decided, oh, I want to live in Hawaii or I want to live near the ocean. That was my yes. big at time. And I currently live in like landlocked, like Rocky mountain type area. I was like, <laughs> But I was like, I I just know the oceans for me. I just know it. And then one day I thought, you know, I better try and live a day near an ocean that I want to live to see if that's actually true. Because what if I'm building this whole life and I get there and I'm like, this is not what I wanted, right? That would be awful. Yeah. So I decided to learn to surf and I decided to learn and I loved it. And it turns out that it was true. And I am meant to live near the ocean and all of those things. But like, I think it's important to like set out and look at like, what is a day in your future life look like? And then I want you to go live that day to the best of your ability right now and put it in your bones and see how it feels and make tweaks to it if you need to, right? You might find like a lot of people say, oh, I want to live in a a condo building so I don't have to mow my lawn. Well, if you've never lived in a condo, like go rent an Airbnb that's in a condo building and see (laughs) if you still love it once those neighbors are tap dancing at three in the morning, right? Like 
Or maybe you need, maybe the answer is you need to live in a concrete condominium. Like who knows, right? But at least go explore and really look at these things because they actually impact every little decision that you make today as well as the big ones. It's such good advice. Yeah. I mean, we moved into a condo a few years ago, 10 years ago, and the, the realtor swore that the upstairs neighbor was very, very quiet. We wouldn't even hear a tap of a foot. <laughs> Oh no, I don't like what I am laying awake, staring at the ceiling, just really hoping you made another decision. But you're right, like testing out that that dream or that vision, even to just say, wait, okay, is this what I really want? Mm -hmm. And how would I feel if I was if this was my everyday? Like that that's so important because that's definitely gonna change the roadmap of what you do with your money to actually get there or to reroute it and figure out, oh, I I think I want to go in a different direction. Maybe I want to live in the mountains. I don't know. Right. Yeah. I've talked to um, this one gal who was like so funny and she was like, you know, working woman and busy with kids and stuff. And she's like, when I retire, I just want to bake. Like, I just want to cook and bake. I said, oh, like, do you bake a lot now? She's like, no, I never do. And I'm like, oh, so we made her like set up for a weekend and like made, she at the end of the weekend, she's like, I hate baking. I'm <laughs> going to have Uber Eats <laughs> delivered to me. Right. Right. So I'm like, okay, well, let's put that in the retirement budget and work backwards from that. Like, let's give you the life where you can dial up a baker and be like, listen, I need a dozen gingerbread cookies. Like, you know what I mean? You don't know until you try it. And we all, and imagining it is one thing and visualizing it's one thing, but really living it will really tell you like, you know, how it's going to work out for you and whether or not it's the right choice. Right. Sometimes the fairy tale version is is just meant to be that. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, one of the things that you uh, that you talk about I, that I love is that your book is this kind of judgment judgment free zone, which is something I say about this show all the time. But uh, you know, what are some ways that that judgment like keeps us trapped in our money cycles or habits? Maybe in good ways and maybe not so good ways. Well, I really do think that the financial services industry is full of judgment and is designed that way to keep us needing them for expert advice. Meaning like, um, you know, if we behave, if we, you know, get the right credit cards and get all the little pieces, right. And we behave, then we get like a little pat on the head. And when we fall short, we should feel ashamed. Um, and the credit collectors are going to call and embarrass us and all of that stuff. So I think like removing that shame and really being like, gosh, like what, what is actually real here? What are the decisions I make? Cause we know that everybody has the best intentions. Nobody, nobody wakes up, you know, at the age of eight and says, mommy and daddy, you know what I want to be when I'm older? I want to be broke. Like nobody does that. And so we have to really be mindful that like we can, um, a lot of the times like shame ourselves because of how like the suffering comes from the difference between how it actually is versus how we expected it to be. And so if we want to remove that suffering and remove that shame, we just have to look at how it actually is and be okay with that and really be mindful not to shame each other when we make financial mistakes either. Um, I was joking with some friends on Instagram this morning. I ordered these shoes. I treated myself to this pair of shoes I've had my eye on for quite a while. And I um, Black friday them and I couponed them and I you know, got them shipped to uh, Florida where I was going to be. And I had it all planned out and I totally forgot, which is like, you know, the first clue that you probably didn't need the shoes in the first place. But anyway, I totally forgot. And I flew home and I just messaged the concierge and said, Oh my gosh, was there a package delivered? And they said, yes, it came while you were here. Sorry, we forgot to tell you. And I'm like, no, no, it's my fault. So I'm like, I arranged the shipping for it to come back to where I am now. So it can meet me where I'm at. And I arranged all that. And then I later logged in and I looked and it cost me three times for the shipping that it did for the shoes. Oh, I was no. joking with my friends. I'm like, follow me for more financial expertise. Right? <laughs> right, like, right. like, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> yeah. And if that had been me 20 years ago, I would have felt so much shame. Like, oh, I'm such an idiot. Like, oh, I can't believe I didn't think about that. And oh, like, how could I forget? Like, I really would have been hard on myself. But now it's like, oh, Aaron, like, I realized that forever I'm going to be making financial mistakes. Not big ones anymore, right? Hopefully, but I'm going to make mistakes. And so having a lot of grace for ourselves when we screw up is really critical so that we don't get stuck on what we did wrong and we can focus now on how we can correct it or make things better going forward. Like I guarantee I'll never make that mistake again. But I might if I start telling myself, oh, you're such an idiot. You don't deserve those shoes. You're, you know what I mean? I could get into like a real big shame spiral. And the shame spiral is also the thing that keeps us dependent on sort of the lenders at the bank. So every time we screw up financially, when we feel bad about it, we walk in 
you know, make an appointment with, at the bank and we feel bad and we're like, please, can you help me? Um, you know more than me. Like we're putting the bank in a position of power over us when instead, when we get rid of that shame, we become empowered to make those changes for ourselves. And that's far more powerful and keeps us out of debt in the long run. I have to tell you about my new obsession, Notion, our sponsor today. Notion has single-handedly changed how I do life for the better. I use Notion for all my daily journaling so I can keep it all in one spot. I also keep all our favorite recipes that are budget-friendly in Notion so I can easily sort and find the ones I love and easily create fast grocery lists. And okay, one of the best uses of Notion You can create a template for your money dates and track your goals right in Notion. Seriously, Notion is a game changer. Notion is a place where any team can write, plan, organize, and rediscover the joy of play. It's a workspace designed not just for making progress, but really getting inspired. It's an AI-powered workspace. It turns knowledge into action. You can use Notion to summarize meeting notes and auto-generate action items, get answers to questions in minute. And you can make all of your money tasks so much easier. Notion is for everyone, whether you're a Fortune 500 company, freelance designer, starting a new startup, a student juggling classes and clubs, or just somebody really wanting to get your life together. Try Notion for free when you go to notion.com slash etm. That's all lowercase letters. Notion.com slash etm and start turning ideas into action. And when you use our link, you're supporting our show, notion.com slash etm. I know I'm a bit biased, but honestly, I think I have the best dog ever. Her name is Winnie Stardust. She is a golden mountain doodle, and she is full of spunk and fun, and she's never met a ball she does not love. I honestly, I would do anything for Winnie, and she has enriched my life so much. I can confidently say Winnie is absolutely one of the most priceless purchases I have ever made. Today's episode is sponsored by the ASPCA Pet Health Insurance Program. In today's world, we insure a lot from cars and homes to cell phones and even travel plans. But what about insurance for your cat or dog? With ASPCA Pet Health Insurance, you can focus on the care your pet deserves and cover what matters most. This is what I call smart spending because Let's be real, those vet bills, they can be expensive. The ASPCA Pet Health Insurance Program offers customizable accident and illness plans, making it easier for pet parents like you to help your pet get the care they need. The ASPCA Pet Health Insurance Program, they've been around for about 18 years, and they've helped more than 600,000 pets during that time. They allow you to customize your plan, helping ensure your pet's plan is unique as they are. Because vet bills, they can really add up, especially when you are least expecting it. It's simple. You use their app to submit a claim and you'll receive reimbursement for eligible vet bills directly into your bank account. To explore coverage, visit ASPCAPetInsurance.com slash ETM. That's ASPCAPetInsurance.com slash ETM. Again, that's ASPCAPetInsurance.com slash ETM. This is a paid advertisement. Insurance is underwritten by either Independence American Insurance Company or United States Fire Insurance Company and produced by PTC Insurance Agency Limited. The ASPCA is not an insurer and is not engaged in the business of insurance. This episode is brought to you by Best Buy. Is a My Best Buy membership worth it? Let's do the math. Starting at just $49.99 a year, you'll get exclusive membership prices on thousands of items, free two-day shipping, and access to member-only sales and events. Savings earned. Sign up for a My Best Buy Plus membership at bestbuy.com today. Auto renews, cancel anytime. See bestbuy.com slash membership for details. Yeah, that shame spiral is very real, and it's very easy to get stuck in it. Yes. Well, I, I want to ask you, there's a, speaking of building wealth, there's a picture on your website of you and Oprah hugging. Oh, <laughs> so I, I got to know more about that. Listen, that was, a oh my gosh, meeting Oprah was pretty amazing. I I was raised by Oprah, as most women were in the, if you grew up in the 80s or the 90s. <laughs> um, and I, I, oh gosh, I don't even know where to tell you about that moment. 
it was, she's just amazing. I mean, she's more remarkable. I think that's what I said to her. I think I said, you're more magnificent in person than I ever imagined or something. But she, she, oh gosh. I think what I learned from her is that like that, it really is that shame piece. Like Oprah was the first person I, I ever experienced who had non-judgmental conversations with people about really hard things. Yeah. And so I just think like, you know, given the opportunity to, to be face to face with her and tell her how much that impacted me was like absolutely critical to my life. So, I mean, that photo um, isn't on there because I'm like, I'm not a name dropper. I've met a lot of celebrities in my life and I don't, I'm not somebody who's like, and then, Right. I, you know what I mean? Meeting this person, I'm, I'm quite shy and I like to be behind the scenes and all of that stuff. But I, that moment captured like that, I think is one of it. It's just so sacred for me, given everything that has gone on in, in my life and how far like deep in the hole I was and how far I've come since and stuff. I just, yeah, that was a pretty cool moment. Yeah. So you, you made this whole arc, you, were in debt, you were kind of in the traditional money system and you kind of arced and figured out, okay, there has to be a better way to do this. And, and you, you get yourself out of debt that sort of leads to this book. If you could, if you could go back and kind of rewind the journey for anyone listening, like what would you say some of your, you know, maybe top three or so pieces of advice or just motivating words that would be beneficial as as you were going through that process and really sort of arcing, changing your thinking, changing how you were doing money, what, what would that be? I think the thing that I would tell myself is like really have some intensity and energy behind it. It can be really easy when you're in debt to like feel like you're waiting a lot of the time. So the, I, I got into the season where like if I knew payday was on Friday and it was Tuesday and I didn't have money in the account, I was just sort of like not living between Tuesday and Friday. I was just sort of waiting for the paycheck to hit so I could do something with that money and get further ahead. And what I would tell myself now is like, listen, that's four days you can be innovative and creative. That's four days you can like make some phone calls to reduce expenses. That's four days that you can um, increase some revenue somehow or other. You can create, you can do all kinds of things, but like put some intensity and energy behind it because the longer you wait, the longer it takes. And also, like, if when you don't feel like you're doing anything, it slows the momentum down. And there's no shit. Honestly, if somebody's listening and you're like in debt right now and you're like, I just really want to be out of it. I don't know why. I just feel like it's not for me. Like, there are people that are perfectly happy to be in debt. And I don't like, good for you. I don't care. I'm not somebody who's like, I'm not coming after you with giant scissors trying to cut up your credit cards. <laughs> I'm here for the people who are like, I hated the way it felt. I knew that I wanted something different. And if that's you and you're listening and you're like, I- I'm telling you, like, go after it. Even if you put a dollar a day down on your debt, every little bit that you do, it's not about the money. It's about the momentum and that energy behind it. And that like promise to yourself and that commitment allows you to see money in a different way. And it allows more money to flow to you a little easier because instead of just focused on Friday and the payday, you're now open to opportunities like, oh gosh, like maybe you figure out a way to earn 10 bucks here and 30 bucks here and $15 here. There were times when I owed the government so much money, like over six figures. And I've made a $6 and 69 cent payment on that debt. And I laugh about it now, but it wasn't about the $6 and 69 cents or the cost to acquire that money or any of that stuff. It was about showing myself that come hell or high water, I was committed to getting it done. And those same money muscles that I built then are the same money muscles that I used to build wealth. Wow. Yeah, that's just, it's so incredibly powerful. I love that analogy or just that frame of thinking that it's, that it really is momentum because that's really what it is. It's it's you having a conscious choice that you're going to do it differently and that you're going to let, even if it's a $6 payment, you're going to let that be okay. And you're going to see that as a victory yes. towards your end goal. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Because I feel like, I feel like so many people can get stuck with the the debt payoff, or even if they're trying to save a large sum of money, maybe to, I don't know, they want to buy something, whatever it might be, you can get stuck in, oh, that just feels like so overwhelming, that that amount of money. And there isn't, I mean, even if I put my $5 down, like that just seems ridiculous. But then what your brain does and your brain goes, well, why don't you just go out then and just spend more money? <laughs> yes, that's exactly what happened, Shauna. And like when people get a bonus, like at work, right? Like they'll wait and they'll think, okay, once I get my bonus, for work, I'll put that into my, you know, 
401k or I'll put that in my Roth IRA or I'll do something with that. But then by the time that bonus comes, they're like, oh, but I also haven't been to Mexico to an all-inclusive in a long period of time. So I think I'll like, so it's not like there's this old saying that like how you handle the pennies will be how you handle the dollars. And so it's also like training yourself to be like, listen, I told myself that that money was going to go towards that Roth IRA and I meant it and I'm going to keep that promise to myself. And then I'll use you know, the interest off of that to go to an all inclusive or whatever, right? Like, but it's, but it's about honoring those money promises that you, that you make to yourself, no matter how big or small, that's really where the magic happens. I love it. Well, Aaron, this has been so amazing. I really would love for you to tell everyone where they can go to connect with you and grab a copy of your book, get the hell out of debt. And I, and when I say that name, I just like, I have to give it some sort of like feeling behind it. (laughs) (laughs) Well, the book is available everywhere. It's at all the bookstores. And I would love if you support your local little independent bookstore, even if they don't have it in stock, you can order it from them. It usually takes a couple of days, but you can also get it from the big chains as well and the big um, delivery, um, big box stores. Um, on the internet, social media everywhere, I'm at Aaron Sky Kelly. It's just that simple. Sky has an E in it. Um, and I just think it's really important to also put the Kelly on the end because there is a porn star named Aaron Sky, and we are both brunette. And so it does uh, confuse people sometimes, but that is not me, though I do admire her ability to earn passive income. Aaron feels like a warm hug to me. When you're looking to achieve a big goal like getting out of debt, you want to learn from someone who is really invested in helping you get there. And that is Aaron. She moves you from judgment that keeps you locked in debt to a judgment-free zone where you not only ditch your debt, you also just feel good about your money, your future, your direction. (laughs) 